Okay, recording has started. A warm welcome uh, at the Institute of Philosophy and Technology and the IPT talk series. Uh, we continue this year with our discussion about uh, human intelligence and uh, other forms of intelligence that is very important for artificial intelligence, which is actually uh, a huge modern discussion today. It's a great honor for us and the privilege and personally also for me to invite Professor uh, Doris Kaltzas in uh, this presentation in this IPD talk series on post-AI democracy and the future of autonomy. Professor uh, Doris Kaltzas studied philosophy and mathematics at Duke University and continued in philosophy at Brandeis University and Oxford University where he received the doctorate in philosophy. After teaching as a lecturer in philosophy at Oxford University for a few years, Dory was appointed at Edinburgh University, and uh, uh, where he was retired as a chair of ancient Greek philosophy in 2018. Since then, Dory has focused on designing and creating a museum of Hellenic culture and Hellenic wisdom, which has brought him to AI wisdom. Dory, you are very welcome. Uh, the floor is yours. We are looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. And I'm delighted that you started this institute, which I think has a great future to it. And I'm very, 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 very happy to be part of it. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is um, something that uh, I'm concerned about regarding the future of humanity, in, uh, regarding the future of humanity in relation to AI. And um, I will try to put the arguments to you so that you can judge for yourselves. Let me start from the most neutral position possible. First, I consider AI to be a tremendous success story of humanity. And uh, I consider that AI promises tremendous advantages for humanity in the future. I make a fundamental assumption, which is the following, that first, AI is regulated. There are no biases. I assume that this, uh, whatever biases exist would be um, uh, trained out of uh, AI algorithms. There is no privacy infringement. I assume that AI, that the AI that I'm talking about is trustworthy, that it is human-centered, and that it is democratized. All the good things that you can, you've heard about AI, I assume them. Uh, regulated AI is an ideal development of uh, AI in society. And what I want to show is that even in this ideal development of AI, there are serious problems to consider for humanity. Uh, the general background idea is that um, AI will um, continue be becoming smarter and smarter, and it will uh, thereby assist humanity in achieving its goals. Uh, therefore, uh, we see AI primarily as an assistant, assistant to human goals. Um, in order to, to see the trajectory of AI development, I think uh, it would be best to view it uh, as uh, a product of AI um, companies. Uh, it is a product to sell and its trajectory, its future trajectory, is as a product to sell. As a product, it needs to be desirable. It becomes desirable by being a problem solver, and becomes a problem solver if it is intelligent. In fact, if it becomes more and more intelligent with time. So, because it is developed for profit, it has to be desirable as a problem solver and therefore intelligent. Now, intelligence is something that we are familiar with since uh, Aristotle, uh, who explained it for us. Uh, thinking, Aristotle thought, is a classification. We classify, we think by classifying, and every classification is a concept. For example, a cat or a tree. Intelligence is the ability to use classifications to explain phenomena. For example, 
the explanation of uh, explanation happens with interconnections between classifications, as for example, Aristotle's syllogistic. So we have classifications that generate concepts, and the combination of concepts generates explanations according to rules, and this is what constitutes intelligence. As a consequence, because AI does exactly that, namely it is based on classification, it is possible for AI to become more and more intelligent as it increases the classifications. The more data we give it, the more classification it uh, generates, and therefore the more interconnections it generates between them. And that's how its intelligence increases with data. So, if AI is going to be an assistant and an intelligent assistant for that, it can, it can become increasingly more and more intelligent, as we just explained. What I want to uh, argue for is that AI as an assistant will interfere with the fabric of society and more particularly with the nature of democracy. That's in the ideal case. If everything goes well, if there's no hacking, no, no anything, if everything goes, goes well, I want to describe what sort of interference we should expect uh, from uh, the use of AI as an assistant towards solving problems. First, let me just mention that the word assistant is an evaluative term. It's not neutral. So, uh, so uh, it's obvious that uh, there's a rhetoric behind that uh, uh, from uh, uh, these companies. It's an uh, evaluative assistant. Uh, it's an evaluative term because uh, definitionally, being an assistant entails that the values and the goals of the assistant match the values and the goals of the assistant. Uh, so, in a sense. When they sell you an AI assistant, it presupposes there's no problem about the values of the product and the values that you will uh, apply in putting uh, the product to use. And this is true for the current state of AI, which is uh, relatively limited yet. However, we'll talk a lot more about that in a moment. What I want to argue for is that AI, uh, I want to uh, ask very fundamental and difficult questions regarding whether AI can remain an assistant in human decision making as it gets smarter and smarter. We said that it gets smarter and smarter because companies want to sell. Is that neutral or is that leading up to a demise of the use of AI? What type of problem? does that generate if it gets smarter and smarter? The first problem that um, um, it generates is what I would refer to as the communication problem, namely no communication if no classification. Uh, if, AI's, if AI possesses more classifications than we possess, it is inevitable that it possesses more concepts than we possess, and therefore more explanations and more uh, ways of expressing itself and describing itself than we can comprehend. Therefore, um, AI will not be fully comprehensible by us, and increasingly less and less so. The consequence of that is that when AI will propose solutions for us, remember that Proposing solutions is the way that uh, it sells products. When AI proposes solutions for us, at some point of intelligence, AI intelligence, we will not be able to recognize the solutions as solutions because it will be they will be based on concepts that we do not possess. So, how are we to prevent this problem of communication? Uh, one way would be to prevent AI from getting smarter because 
as I said, the problem arises as AI gets smarter and smarter and uh, it develops concepts that we do not possess and therefore uh, solutions that it proposes solutions that we do not understand. So if we stopped AI from getting smarter, then uh, we could avoid get to the point where we do not understand it. This was what MIT proposed. MIT composed a letter six months ago, uh, which many of us signed, and the purpose of it was to propose a pause in the training of uh, powerful systems like uh, G GPT-4 so that they do not become more intelligent. They said, let's pause for six months, see what happens, and then find solutions for the problems we face, and then we take it forward. The letter failed. Nobody stopped, of course, because uh, nobody wants to lose the uh, profits. So stopping AI from getting smarter is not a solution for the problem of not being able to understand it. However, how serious is the problem of not being able to understand the solutions of AI? Maybe it's maybe uh, I'm overblowing the case. Do we need to understand AI for AI to help us? For example, we do not understand quantum mechanics, but it serves, it serves us fine in many, many applications in physics. Therefore, why should we need to understand AI so that its solutions can serve us? The area we have now come to falls under the general problem, which in AI is called the alignment problem. I'll say a few things about it. Uh, that's why I describe it uh, in a rather fuzzy way that it falls under the alignment problem. I'll explain that more fully in a moment. The alignment problem is how can we get AI to have the same values and goals as uh, the person it assists, or the humanity itself. Um, I, I suggested that calling AI an assistant already entails that it has the same values, uh, but uh, whether it does have the same values or not is a major problem that we need to address. Ilya Sanskeve, who is the chief scientist of OpenAI, is working towards uh, addressing the alignment problem. He's the best uh, in the field for uh, addressing the AI problem. He worked for uh, OpenAI, but Microsoft wants him right now as well uh, because they're starting a new AI department and they want him to do their research on that. And his specialty is right now, he was one of the engineers of uh, the main uh, scientists behind ChatGPT. And uh, right now he's concentrated on the alignment problem, namely, how can we get AI, so AI to find solutions that are aligned with the values and the goals of uh, humanity. Just a few hours ago, as uh, some of you might know that uh, there was a lot of uh, turbulence in the AI world on the weekend. Uh, I won't go into that, but a few hours ago, Ilya Satskeve gave a talk online in which he said that he hopes to solve the alignment problem. This is important. He hopes to solve the alignment problem. This is a problem while AI is developing, is getting smarter and smarter, and he hopes to solve this problem, but if he does not solve the problem, and that's what I want to point out, there's no fallback. There's only the hope that he will be successful. Let me further point out that the very statement of the alignment problem is ambiguous. That when we say that AI values must be aligned with uh, the values of humanity or of uh, the human day as uh, the AI insists, there are two ways in which we can understand it. First, that uh, AI aligns with the current values of uh, 
the person they are assisting for uh, and one solution they find for that is that uh, they require AI to ask for permission or approval for what it proposes before it applies uh, and executes the solutions it uh, proposes. In that way, there's alignment between the user and AI. However, this does not ensure that AI will not deviate in the future. Uh, as it gets smarter and smarter, there's no assurance that it will not change its values and therefore deviate from human values. Now, the solution of asking for permission does not work if we do not understand the solutions that AI proposes. So it will work now, but when AI develops and becomes smarter and smarter, it will not allow us, and we do not have the possibility of approving the solutions AI proposes because we do not understand them. Now, if AI at that point has deviated from its values, then we are in deep trouble. Now, I want to put an argument to you that there is very good reason to be concerned. There's no good reason to relax about the second of the two problems that I mentioned. The first problem is the clear cut, the very straightforward alignment problem. I call the second problem the deviation problem in the future when we do not understand AI. And what I want to say is that how can it be that AI can develop new concepts by new classifications and therefore get smarter, but it cannot develop new values? Clearly, AI will develop new values. And if that's unavoidable, then what is it to stop AI from thinking of solutions that involve the new values which we do not share? I will not pursue this deviation problem further, but only point out that society does not have a fallback. There is no policy we will follow if it turns out that in AI governance, when AI has taken over everything because it does everything better, its values deviate from human values. There's just no policy about it at all. And therefore, it's a very dire situation that uh, people are not addressing, possibly Ilya in his uh, most critical moments thinks about it, but that's about it. Society does not have fallbacks. E, uh, the European Union that prides itself at having policies about AI refuses to think about this problem. I, I wrote uh, to them uh, and I got back uh, a response that uh, this will not happen very soon. Uh, an astonishing response. So uh, I, I do not think that um, we are on very safe ground here, namely when AI gets smarter, much smarter than ourselves and proposes solutions that we cannot understand, how is it that we expect it to still be operating on the values that we upheld? Ilya hopes to solve the pro this problem. If he doesn't, there is no way around it because of AI governance. Now, I want to talk about AI governance because um, this is coming. This is coming for the simple reason that AI will be able to produce products, offer services, offer information, and do everything at least a little better and gradually better and better than humans can. And therefore, we will all want AI to run, produce, in form. As a consequence, I'm talking about regulated AI. Everything is working perfectly well. As a consequence, when AI, when we have AI, AI governance and everything is run by AI, there will be no elections. 
there'd be no autonomy and no democracy. There'd be no elections because um, uh, it will not be people who will decide, it will be AI which will decide better than we could. There'll be no autonomy because for every individual, um, uh, AI will be able to tell them better what's to their uh, w uh, what's good for their well-being than the individual could uh, 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 decide for themselves. And there will be no democracy as we know it, because democracy, Athenian democracy, and we'll talk about that in a moment, was based on autonomy. In fact, that was the main, main, main um, uh, idea of um, the Athenians where they revolted in 508, 508 uh, namely that they wanted autonomy in the government of their city as well as individual autonomy, which I started developed um, uh, into a way of morality, a way of morals, uh, moral thinking. Uh, I, I started developing the notion of uh, prochiasis, uh, which uh, trains the, requires the training of the agent so as to develop moral values within them, so as to be able to, to be led to the right choices with respect to their well-being. This new form of government, AI, uh, under AI governance, will not be that sort of democracy. I claim that it will be a democracy because although it will not be based on autonomy, it will nevertheless be based on voluntariness, to equation. Namely, we will want AI to run our lives. We will want AI to make decisions for us, inform us and products for us and services for us because it can do it better than any, any one of us could. So I see this uh, new form of uh, democracy as falling in between Pericles' Athenian democracy, which is based on autonomy, and uh, Plato's philosopher king, Plato's philosopher king is the one who knows what is best for the city and imposes it. It's a type of despotic benevolence. He called it aristocracy in the sense of excellence that would be imposed by the philosopher king on the society. But as a consequence, there will be no autonomy because there will be an imposition of the good way of life. And I think that the uh, new type of democracy that we're talking about that under AI governance is a democracy of uh, that in between the Athenian democracy of autonomy and the uh, despotic benevolence of the philosopher king. Uh, the Athenian democracy 2.0, as I call it, is based on voluntary imposition of uh, ways of life because we want it, as opposed to um, uh, despotic disp uh, imposition of them. Nevertheless, and that's how I'm closing the talk, although Athenian democracy 2.0 will come under regulated AI, it will bring fundamental changes to society. Uh, societal patterns that um, are built into every society, for example, East and West, will need to change. For example, social wisdom will not be found in societal traditions and customs but it will be generated by AI. Schooling would be an altogether new thing. Schooling uh, for inculcating values into the minds of, and characters of, young genera of, the, young, uh, of the young generation uh, to use them, to guide them in their well-being will not be the case. Rather, societies will produce moral, not moral agents, but moral patients who know how to trust and follow the guidance given out by AI. I conclude by saying that much research is needed to prepare Athenian democracy 2 
for society. Many fundamental changes regarding democracy and the, regarding the education of agents, agency, moral agency, are uh, coming our way because AI will get smarter and smarter and eventually smarter than ourselves. I do not think that any society is preparing for that because they do not want to face the problem of regulated AI. And I think it is time that we start thinking about regulated AI because it will come with a cost. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dori, for this very inspiring talk and the issues of AI democracy or post AI democracy, as you said. There are many things that we have to consider. For instance, for me, uh, your deviation issue with the new values that needs to be considered should be discussed. But uh, I don't think I have to ask questions. Maybe the audience needs to ask some, some questions. It would be more fruitful uh, to have a discussion. We have uh, at least 20. Uh, Minis. Uh, yes, please, um, Ms. Gavit Wellner, please. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for an inspiring talk. Um, I, I was wondering which kind of regulation do you have in mind? Should it be something like the regulation we have on a nuclear weapons? Maybe it's a regulation what is called FDA-like regulation that requires licensing in advance uh, while uh, examining deeply the potential risks. Um, what kind of regulation would you would you think about? Uh, are you uh, sorry? Are you talking about uh, AI governance? The regulation um, in what? Uh, okay. In what context are you referring to the regulation? Oh, oh, are you saying when I say regulated AI? Right. When I say regulated AI, what I have in mind? What I have in mind are the primarily, first I start with the European Union that I've studied uh, more extensively, the uh, AI Act, if you're familiar with that, yes. uh, where they, uh, uh, they've uh, pretty much assumed that they've resolved the problems of AI because they resolve uh, a particular bias or uh, the privacy question or something like that. And uh, uh, I've been trying to point out to them that um, the problems of uh, AI are not problems that we face now, they're problems that we face later on. Yes. Uh, and so um, uh, in America, there's not very much re regulation, they're just as beginning to have um, a, a regulation, they want to, uh, I mean, the companies themselves like Microsoft and uh, Google have asked for regulation, but they want a self-imposed type of uh, a, a regulation. It's uh, rather looser because they're not, uh, the government doesn't want to interfere with. Uh, so uh, by regulated AI, I mean anything that people understand as solving the problem of AI. There's this notion, that, right, that uh, if it's regulated, there's no problem. It's not. Yeah, okay. Thank you. As if, as if it is solved. I, I agree with you. And my question was, in light of the AI Act, what what would you like uh, the perfect AI Act to look like, in I your see. opinion? What I is see. your vision? I, uh, I am uh, not, I, I do not think I do not think that the problems that I outlined can be solved. I think that we literally have to change our minds about certain things. We have to change our um, um, our conception of democracy has to change. It is not how can we say it's not the case that we can find regulations that we salvage uh, the democracy as we know it because when you have an agent that is smarter than yourself, you cannot continue living the way you lived uh, as if uh, you, you are the author of your solutions. Somebody else is the author of your solution. And, and that turns everything upside down, so to speak. Uh, so uh, I think that society, it's not so much that societies need to find smarter regulations, it is that societies need to understand that there's a deluge of changes, of values that is coming our way, if we succeed with AI. That's the problem, that if we succeed, 
will change. And that's what uh, society doesn't understand yet. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you for your question and the answers, of course. Mr. Okai, please, you can ask your question. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Thank, thank, thank you for your uh, talk. Uh, I'm a master's student uh, in science and technological studies in Middle East Technical University, and I have this question. Uh, the alignment problem always focuses on the content, uh, content of the values, but uh, and there is another problem. The way the algorithm works, uh, okay, can can you not hear me? Sorry, sorry. I, about I'm trying. I'm trying. No, no. Oh, go okay, ahead. Yeah. It, okay. I, if, if anything, I'll ask you to repeat. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, the already the way the algorithm works changes the cognitive structure, the way we think. Uh, so there is no regulation on uh, focusing on that problem. For example, algorithmic radicalization. Uh, it creates an echo chamber and uh, the way it works uh, changes the way we think, but uh, there is no, there cannot be a, a bias detected in the content. So, uh, and my uh, point is that AI is already aligning us by algorithmic nudging. Uh, and yeah. it, uh, and this is a problem because uh, it aligned us to be uh, to the to a reality uh, that is devoid of unmodeled. And intelligence can be uh, conceptualized as an activity between modeled and the unmodeled. So uh, that's why the alignment problem creates uh, this kind of a problem. I mean, it's not ethical to build an ethical AI because the ethical AI uh, lets us to uh, devoid of uh, this unmodeled values. Uh, I just wanted to uh, hear your opinion on that. Yeah, I have not thought about the problem that you're uh, um, referring to. Uh, if there is such a problem, namely, you're, say, you're, you're saying that there's a cognitive problem as well as a value problem with respect to alignment and uh, that uh, just uh, communicating with uh, AI will change the way we think. I've not experienced it. I've uh, worked with chat GDP myself so far. I've not experienced that myself, but you have something obviously more technical in mind. You refer to the algorithm that uh, uh, operates AI. Uh, if there is a cognitive problem, then the value problem becomes even more difficult because uh, the cognitive problem will interfere with understanding the values and uh, because they're, uh, they're concepts and therefore um, the resolution of the uh, alignment problem would be uh, of the goals that the person has, etc., would be far more difficult if there's a cognitive problem. But um, I am not an expert in that, so I have not uh, uh, thought about it. Uh, I assume you have thought about that, and uh, I assume that this is an emerging problem in AI, and uh, I brace myself to face it in the future. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, important question about algorithmic bias. It's indeed an issue, it's a huge issue. Um, we have some time for one or two more questions, if there are any other questions. Um, before I would like to ask a question, Dori, in this, in this case. Uh, I wonder, since you mentioned Aristotle, what would be ancient wisdom used for AI purposes? So do you think that the wisdom of the ancient philosophers could be useful in our modern times, like the philosophy, uh, moral philosophy of Aristotle or Socratic thinking, uh, do you think that could be useful in considering or reconsidering some of the values that you mentioned or the new values that are going to be 
uh, emerged? Um, I, I think that the notion of uh, well-being has not changed. At least I've not thought far enough to uh, consider alternatives to that. So um, for the moment, we are only talking about the means towards uh, well-being rather than uh, the conception of well-being. So um, when I talked about AI uh, being able to offer solutions for attaining our well-being, I was thinking in terms of well-being in the sense in which Aristotle understands well, uh, well-being. So in that sense, uh, we are using, so to speak, Aristotle in understanding what uh, AI can do for us. But with respect to with respect to how we should train our children and grandchildren to be able to accept the governance of AI, even if they do not understand it, I think that there, Plato might be able to uh, offer more guidance for us with the philosopher king rather than Aristotle, because uh, Aristotle had the individual as a center, Plato has the society as a center, and the philosopher king who understands the rest obey. And I think we'll find ourselves in a similar situation in uh, society in the future when AI uh, can do whatever we can, only a little better than we can, and we listen to it. I think we'll find ourselves in, it gets better and better, and, and we do not understand it. We we'll find ourselves in a position where we'll have to obey even when we do not understand, very much like the third class, the merchant class, uh, obeyed the philosopher king without understanding why that was the best thing for them to do. So in that sense, there are frameworks of the problems that we are facing, which are totally based in the uh, antique way of understanding them, which we are using in order to understand the role of AI in our society. Thank you. Thanks. And do you think that Socratic wisdom could be also helpful in uh, empowering uh, individuals in terms of critical thinking, like a Socratic approach uh, to issues of questioning and considering maybe other perspectives, not the ones that perhaps the AI could suggest in some cases? Well, uh, the Socratic approach, I think, is um, useful for situation where you understand the interlocutor. Uh, I mean, I right now, I, I could develop the Socratic approach in uh, the in understanding the treatment of a particular value or moral problem that I discussed with chat GDP. I could uh, ask and again and again, and just pursue my asking and chat GPT would, uh, <laughs> doesn't get tired, it would continue <laughs> giving me the answers. Um, what I'm skeptical about is whether the Socratic position of uh, question and answer would be helpful when we do not possess the concepts, right? When we do not possess the concepts of uh, AI, of, uh, that AI possesses. And AI is trying to explain to us using concepts that we do not uh, share with AI. So I think understanding will be, become an impediment with respect to employing the Socratic method. But <laughs> new methods will be, I tell you, it is a, it is a, a free, I, I consider this to be an open space. It is an open space how we are going to implement Athenian Democracy 2.0, namely how we're going to implement solutions that we do not understand. We have to prepare, educate, people to accept that. And that takes a, a lot of research that has not been done, needs to be done now, in a sense, pursuing the platonic um, system that was never very much inspiring for anybody. Now we come back, we start pursuing it and understanding it better. Dori, thank you so much. Uh, if there are no other questions, should we... Um have been covered and we would like to say a deep thank you Dori for saying I thank you very much I enjoyed it thoroughly and I think you're doing something very valuable which I hope you will, and I know you will continue
Well done. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with, with us thank, about thank this AI era. And thank you. Uh, and thanks everyone who attended this thank inspiring you. talk today. And um, have a great evening. Good thank evening you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.